all the versions of Photoshop that you should encounter should have all the functions that I use. Um, so we've got the, the folder of all the images, right? So what I do is I just start with the first one and use the usual image thing. You can use bridge if you want, um, but it's a, um, I just like to do it by, by file. And you just scroll through um, getting a preview of your images. Um, and you can see here in a second, these are the ones that I bracketed. Remember, we talked about that, where you change the exposure but keep the camera in the same spot. So what you what you look for is so this one's underexposed. This one's a little better. This one's a little better. This one's overexposed. What you do is you look for um, in this corner, like right here. You can see some of the information start to disappear, right? So you, in the in the underexposed, you see all the lines. You see them there, and they start to disappear here, right? Yeah. So you would probably pick this one to be the basis, 751, right? There you go. Bump it into Photoshop, right? So if your rulers don't show up, you can hit View Rulers or hit Control R. Um, but you, but rulers are super useful. Um, what I do before anything else um, is uh, I want to kind of adjust the white balance, right? So because the paper is white and I want it to appear white, right? So um, all you have to do is go to Image Adjustments. Actually, um, let's do the levels first. The levels are a more accurate way to um, brighten or darken an image. So usually what I find is by moving the, uh, the high number level over to where the actual data starts, you've increased the image quality significantly with one little change, right? And it's better than changing the brightness or, or contrast. Um, the next thing you do is go to image adjustments and then uh, go to uh, color balance. And um, you can pick shadows, midtones, or highlights. Um, we can pick highlights and you can see how that, that changes the color dramatically, right? You see it? Okay. So we'll reset it to zero. The midtones it'll change more mid-tone color. You see how it's changing more of the uh, actual drawing? Shadows. It changes less of the information. Just as a general default, you can leave it on mid-tones, right? So, on my screen, I kind of see a little extra a little extra red, but I don't want to kick it too far. Now I see a little extra magenta. Now I'm seeing an overdose of blue, right? So I've kind of adjusted the color balance slightly, and it looks a little weird on the projector. Every screen is slightly different, but I just go with what looks good on my sort of display, and then um, I verify it on my phone, you know? just because that's how most people are going to see work these days, is on mobile. Um, the next step, now that you have the sort of levels adjusted, is uh, you want to make it kind of square and crop it, right? <coughs> so what I do is I pull out guides. And I pull a guide out on each side and make it um, the exact, at the widest point of the uh, image, right? And I do four, so I'm, I'm essentially just boxing in the piece, right? Make sense? So now that I've got my guide set up, I make sure when I hit view that uh, 
that they're snapping to the guides right there. Um, so I can take the selection tool and it'll snap onto those guides, right? Make sense? Next, uh, I just go to image and then crop. And I've cropped out everything but this one thing, right? Now I'm gonna um, select everything. Control A is the hotkey. Now what I wanna do is, you see how this is kind of distorted? Right? You can see the wrinkly bits of paper. There's a really cool transform tool. So you go to edit, transform, and you go to warp. And in a two-dimensional two way, this will kind of stretch your image out with anchor points so that it can fill up the actual box. So you see how it's only pulling that one corner and it's not really distorting the image itself, unless it needs to, right? Sometimes your image will be distorted and you have to correct it. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? So in about 3.3 .3 seconds, then you just hit, or you just hit enter, and uh, then you deselect. Uh, control D is the hotkey, or select, deselect. Boom. And you're done, right? It's kind of nifty. The, uh, the, next, the next thing is uh, you can go to image and image size, right? And this is where you can adjust the resolution, right? Like if you want print resolution, you go um, like 600 DPI, right? Um, you wouldn't want to resample it though. So you go to um, image, image size, alt control I is the hotkey, go away from resample, do 600, and it readjusts. So if I wanted a full print size it, on, at 600 dpi, that would give me the ideal height and width without resampling, right? So without losing data, it'd have to be a very small image, right? But um, you just have to go with whatever like some printers won't print at 600 DPI, they'll only print at 300. So you can put it at 300 and you get a 12 by nine, right? If you need to up the image size, what you do is 110%. So you can go to image, image size, and you can just kind of, uh, you can do an auto resolution, all these new things, it's kind of cool. Um, but you can go, you can go percent, right? So you can just do 110. Or 110, boom. So if you bump it up 110%, 110%, 110%, 110%, you'll get a huge image by the end, right? Um, and uh, it won't distort as much as if you just go ahead and do 200%. It's kind of weird the way that it the way that it works. Um, so it's kind of a progressive thing. Um, what you can do here is go save as, and then you go. Uh, save it as whatever, JPEG, it'll give you options. So this is saving in your original resolution. Now, if you want to save for the web, you go save for the web, um, say you want it as a JPEG, you do high, whatever. Put it on, we'll just put it on the uh, same thing. And I usually do um, put a little W, so it's the web. And then if you go back in here and look at the two files, you have one that's 4.5 megs and one that's 917K, so under a meg, right? So saving for the web and devices compresses it a lot, but keeps the same resolution. Interesting, huh? Yeah, so then um, what you can do um, is you can, uh, Yeah, both JPEGs, just wildly different sizes, right? Um, but you know, for the for the web, it's changing. Like I typically will do uh, something that's 800 pixels high. Um, 
and I like to work in, in, in pixels, but it's not letting me. So here you can lock the, re the relationship. Pixels per centimeter, pixels per inch, whatever. Seven twenty by five sixty seven. So I'd want like a maybe a fifteen inch. Yeah. That'd be a good web resolution. So now if I go file, save for web, save it, and then I can do web two. Boom. When I look at the file size, that's one twenty one K. So that's super, super small. And perfect for for websites, but when you open it, it still, it basically fills a normal size screen, right? That's a quick crash course, that's all you have to do. So it's really only a couple of steps. It's adjust the color balance, the levels, then crop it, warp it, and save it for the web.